How you doing? How you doing? Good morning to some, good afternoon to some, and good night to some. <laughs> uh, this is your host, Anthony, here, and I'm really excited to express to you the top four tips for building business relationships, guys. You know, coming from the uh, digital sales space, coming from business finance. Uh, at one point, I was uh, also uh, offering credit card processing lead generation software tools, guys, you name it, I've probably done it, um, as well as, I mean, real estate investment tools. I mean, so many different things uh, that I've done. I can at least say that I have, uh, you know, enough knowledge to know what it takes to build a business relationship. So um, just give me maybe 15 to about maybe 35 minutes of your time. Um, if you have that time, I definitely do appreciate it to all of my um, entrepreneurs, um, all of my business executive executives, all of my people that are interested in just relationship building um, in, in general, just in the mere essence of it. I think that this will engage your mind and it will sink deep um, as I kind of uh, give you like a background uh, mindset shift in uh, putting together really how you should be really as you are presenting your product or your service to a small to medium size or large business owner, CEO, no matter whom it is, I think that this is definitely something <clears throat> that can help you. So top four tips for building business relationships, how to create effective and relevant conversations. Now, the key, the key takeaways of this things to discuss is the introduction, which is the first call. The potential client owns the meeting. Uh, number three, asking the right questions. And number four, drawing up a strategic proposal based on the concerns of the client. Now, let's check out my beautiful face there. <laughs> First call, express your eagerness to help them. Express your eagerness to help them. Now, I cannot express this enough, how important it is for you to have enthusiasm, being excited for partnering with them, knowing that they are a small to medium-sized business. You are interested in networking with them, building a relationship with them. Um, you probably sought them out on social media and uh, you, you know, just saw some things that really uh, stuck out to you uh, that which prompt you to want to build a relationship and engage with them. You don't want to get techie, just spit the facts about what you saw and, and, and how you feel. Right. And, you know, it, it's just the first call. Just relax. You know, they may say, no, it's fine. Brush it off and just call it a day and go move on, just move on. But again, guys, listen, listen, just express your eagerness to help them. It's just the first call. Remember, you're trying to build a relationship with them. They did not call you, you called them. You don't know what they were doing before that. They probably was sitting, you know, drinking a cup of coffee, watching, uh, you know, Judge Judy or something, who knows? And you probably interrupted them when Judge Judy was giving somebody you know, the, the, you know, just cussing them out real good. You know how she gets, you know, a great judge, but you might have, you know, interrupted their time, their meal time. You really don't know, okay, where that person is at mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, like you just don't know where they are. So you have to meet that person where they are in real time on that first call, expressing your eagerness to help them in their business. And on this goal, on this 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 uh, first call, the goal is to set up an appointment with them. All right. So let's just say that you set up that appointment, and the appointment is to be in front of a computer, uh, or doing a Zoom call. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, doing a Zoom call. So let's let's move right along. Okay, potential clients owns the meeting. Now, 
I know some of you probably already reading the screen, probably jumping the gun here, but let me explain this. For a long time, a lot of, um, you know, say people that are in the independent sales organization or, or you know, or, you know, organization, uh, sales consultants, inside sales, sales, anybody, uh, whatever it is that you do when you're offering a product or a service, you provide value. A lot of them will always tell you, you own this and you own that. Don't let them take over. You, you, you know more than they. Listen, from the initial first call, remember, this is to build a relationship. This is not to sell them. Okay. So allow the client freedom to speak, listen and learn. Man, I cannot tell you how important this is. You said on the first call that basically you are interested in building a relationship. You may have some things that may be of use to them in their business. You just want a time to touch base with them on a Zoom call, show them, you know, uh, well, well, not show them really anything, but just build a relationship with them. You're learning them. Okay. That's why I said, listen and learn. You can't teach somebody something if you're not listening to them, how are you going to teach them when you don't even know their concerns? They probably already know what you're going to say because they're probably already, they probably already have an idea of what you're going to talk about. And, and oh, I've heard this before, all of that. So in this call, okay, I mean, on this meeting, it's letting them own the meeting and putting them on the spot, to be honest. It's like a strategic switch, okay? So allow them to own the meeting. Let them, let them take over. Let them be the host in asking them the question. So allow the client freedom to speak about them, their needs, because it's their business, right? You're here to serve them, right? So understanding your client's needs makes for a better relationship. Don't try to out-talk them, just listen and engage politely. This is not a sales call. I repeat, this is not a sales call. You wanna stand out, you wanna stick out from the rest of the other guys, probably offering somewhat similar, if not the same exact thing that you're offering. If this person wants to get on another call and close them on the first call, and then another person who wanna call them and close them on the first call, by the time, say 50 people tries to do that, can you imagine you being 51? You're gonna get the backlash of every single other business owner. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's so much that, that, that you're gonna get because of you smell like the rest of them. The other ones tainted your opportunity to, to offer your opportunity to build a relationship. Your initial uh, 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 engagement should not be close, close, close. And, you know, that always be closing stuff. I completely understand that. I've had that mentality, but for my, this is just me, my experience have not been, I'm going to jump on here 10 minutes later, I'm closing. Now, has that been done? Yes, it has. But I firmly believe in just on just me. I'm not talking about somebody else, okay? What you do is what you do. But for me, the relationship part, the building of it, 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 it grows into them wanting me to close them, not me forcing that awkwardness. Okay, so, you know, maybe exactly, you know? So... Don't try to out-talk them. Don't make them feel, okay, like you're trying to rush them. Now, you want to stay within your limit, right? You want to stay within your time limit. You know, maybe they booked a 60-minute slot with you on the calendar. Maybe they booked a 30-minute. So you want to respect their time. But let them talk. If they go over that time, okay, well, if they go over a certain amount of time, there is a polite way that you can say something around the lines of, they're talking. And once they do a, a little chuckle, they're like, yeah, I remember when, um, and they go into what they, what they remembered, right? Because you're learning them, right? Because they're owning the meeting right now. And you hear that, oh man, good times. You're like, just, just saying, you know, that's the time to say that, you know, that's definitely an amazing story. And I'm glad Mr. Business Owner that you shared that with me, but to respect your time, we got about maybe 15 minutes. Um, I want to ask you this question here, and you just jump right back into what you were going to talk about, okay? So 
And, you know, remember, it's not a sales call. You're not trying to close them. And you know what? That's going to trip them up because they're going to they're going to be like, oh, OK, you know, I'll. All, all you want to do is just build a relationship for this one. Yeah, that's all I want to do. I don't have a proposal. I don't have nothing. I'm here to learn about you, your needs, your concerns, right? All right. Asking the right questions. By listening, you'll know which direction to go. By listening, by listening. Have you ever gotten a presentation and you said something or you're on the phone and then someone says, Wait, huh? Yo, you're not even paying attention to me. That's because you're not listening to them. It's so frustrating when you're, you know, you're, you got people talking a mile a minute these days and they're talking, 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 but you're supposed to pick up certain things that they said, engage in conversation with them. So you don't want to be caught slipping, whereas though they ask you a question based on, you know, things that they're talking about and you're just stone faced not knowing what's going on because you're so focused on your wallet, right? You're focused on the next deal. You're focused on the weather outside. None of that stuff matters at the time. The focus is the business owner. It is the potential client, okay? You'll also learn that asking the right questions feeds into the cultural-based workflow of the company and the vision the client has. It is such an important thing to know the vision the vision, like the, it's kind of like the, the final product that the business owner wants to have, the, the, the vision of how he sees his business, say, uh, I don't know, 10, 25, however many years from now. You want to keep that trail line, okay, as the Lord says, you know, on the straight and narrow, you want to keep that straight line in the direction of that vision, okay? From a visionary to a visionary, you want to relate to them looking at their vision, asking questions like, okay, how can we get to your goal? How do you feel about this? Does this suit your needs? Asking the right questions that's connected to their vision, right? Getting, if the, if the, the CEO or the business knows his customers well, or he knows his employees well, you can get him to discuss something that you can offer that can be very beneficial to the cultural environment of the business, not just the financial environment, okay? Because your employees is really who runs the business, like when you really think about that, because they do all of the work to keep the business going. So you want the the culture to feel good, not just the business owner. So it feels good as he expresses or she expresses the vision of what he wants, it feels great to know that um, it feels great to know that you, the presenter, the host, okay, the one giving the value, actually cares about him or her as a human being with a beating heart, cares about the company, cares about every person that works for him or with him, okay. Now. Here is the last slide for today. Now, the strategic proposal. Now, this is after you've ended the meeting on Zoom, you have uh, did some thinking and you have all of your notes in front of you, you know exactly what the needs are, you know everything that's going on. Okay, now it's time to put together your proposal. You've already set up another time that's best fit for the business owner, okay? And you're ready, say, the next day. You can draw something up, you know, really nice for him or her. But the strategic proposal, now, once you're on, you know, the Zoom meeting, the proposal is going to be displayed usually in front of them, right? So you start with an outline of topics discussed in the prior meeting and identify highlights concerns with meaningful objections okay not just stone aggressive objections in you know no meaningful ob ob um, objections put some love in your tonality of voice right put some care and concern letting them know that you're not really disagreeing with them you're relating with them with a different perspective with a different idea right 
make it connect, make it come together, all right? Now, don't jump to conclusions, don't rush to close and final offers just yet, not just yet, remember, relationship, okay? Remember to keep your presentation easy, informative, and relatable to what was discussed prior in the other meeting. Address all concerns and make sure that the primary focus is the relationship you are seeking to gain, all right? Now, agreeable or non-agreeable, okay, whether or not you guys come to an agreement where as though he's like, okay, this is great for me and my business, I'm ready to go. Or it's like, eh, you know what, this would have been great if it was 10 months ago, or, you know, I just don't see the value in it, you know, maybe next time, right? Now, once you are finished everything, whether or not they want to work with you, still engage and encourage questions from the client. Business owners love to play hardball sometimes. Remember, you did your best, okay? It's not always going to be a, 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 a clean sweep, as they say, all right? It's not going to be a one-shot deal, one call closed. It doesn't always work that way. Business owners probably already have something similar in the pipeline. They probably just think it's just Facebook marketing. Oh, I just think that it's this. Oh, you guys are all the same. But he's not really expressing that to you. You know, he is entertaining uh, what you're saying because you are entertaining. You are, you know, someone that he may do, he may possibly want to do business with. But a lot of times they act like they don't want it. It's kind of like when you're at an interview and the person's looking dead in your face with no expression at all. But inside they're jumping for joy, like, let's hire this man right now right? So it's kind of like that. So remember, guys, you did the very best that you can. Don't sweat it. Let it roll off your back. Okay, go back into your data sheets, you know, figure out maybe you could have changed something or, or whatever. But listen, don't, don't feel bad. Be encouraged, stay encouraged. I do hope that this has helped somebody better themselves in the top four tips of building business relationships. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. God bless you. And please, be safe. And to whomever needs to hear this, I love you. And so does Jesus. Thank you.